A student plans to determine the enthalpy change of reaction 3.1 shown below. This enthalpy change can be determined indirectly using Hess's law from the enthalpy changes of reaction 3.2 and reaction 3.3 shown below. We're given the enthalpy change of reaction 3.3 as negative 57.6 kilojoules per mole. The student will determine the enthalpy change of reaction 3.2 as outlined below. Weigh a bottle containing Na2O solid and weigh a polystyrene cup. Add about 25 centimeters cubed of water to the polystyrene cup and measure its temperature. Add the Na2O solid, stir the mixture and measure the maximum temperature reached. Weigh the bottle or the empty bottle and weigh the polystyrene cup with the final solution. We're given the mass readings and temperature readings and told that the density and specific heat capacity C of the solution are the same as for water. Part A. Calculate the enthalpy change of reaction 3.2 and the enthalpy change of reaction 3.1. Show all your working. By indirectly using Hess's law, this questions meaning we can combine enthalpy change values to get an overall enthalpy change value. So that means in the context of this question, the enthalpy change value of reaction 3.1 will equal the enthalpy change value of reaction 3.2 plus 2 of the enthalpy change values of reaction 3.3. We know this because if we look at reaction 3.2 and 3.3, we can combine them to get reaction 3.1, but we need to times 3.3 by 2 because if we look at the molar ratios, we have 2 HCl and 2 NaCl in reaction 3.1, but in reaction 3.3, we've only got 1, hence we need to times by 2. In this question, we're going to be using the equation mc delta t equals q, where q is measured in joules. We're told in the question that the density and specific heat capacity C of the solution are the same as water. Now, in our data sheets, we get given the specific heat capacity of water, and it's 4.18. This is a value you don't need to know as you get given it in the exam. If we start by working out the mass of Na2O using our mass readings, we would do 16.58 minus 15.34. Typing that into the calculator, we get 1.24 grams. Then, working out the mass of solution, we would take our 47.33 grams and minus it from our 21.58 to give us 25.75 grams. Then, working out our temperature change, or delta T, we take 55.5 and minus 20.5 to give us 35 degrees Celsius. Plugging this into the equation, mass would be the mass of solution because that's the thing that's having its temperature measured and temperature change, so 25.75 multiplied by 4.18 multiplied by 35 would give us 3,767.225 joules. In the question, we use kilojoules per mole, so we need to turn this into kilojoules. 3.767225 kilojoules. Next, we need to work out the moles of Na2O. To do this, we need to take the mass, 1.24, and divide by the relative formula mass of Na2O, which is 23 times 2. 23 is the relative formula mass of Na, plus 16, which will give us 0.02 moles of Na2O. So we're working out the enthalpy change of reaction 3.2 here. And we do that by taking our kilojoules, 3.767225, 
and dividing it by our moles, 0.02, which gives us 188. We need to make sure we put a negative because this enthalpy change is exothermic. And then our units, kilojoules per mole. Then for reaction 3.3, we know that enthalpy change value, so we can work out reaction 3.1. So the enthalpy change of reaction 3.1 is equal to minus 188 plus 2 times minus 57.6, which is the enthalpy change of reaction 3.3, which gives us minus 303.2 kilojoules per mole. In this question, the asterisk on the A means it's a level response question. So you can spot for these in the exam, which means you get marks for detail. You'd get marks for working out your masses of Na2O and solution, a mark for your temperature change using the MC delta T equation, converting your units, and then a mark for the correct values of reaction 3.2 and reaction 3.1, their enthalpy change values being correct. So that will get you six marks for this question. B, the uncertainty in each temperature reading is plus minus 0.1 degrees Celsius. The uncertainty in each mass reading is plus minus 0.005 grams. Determine whether the mass of Na2O or the temperature change has the greater percentage uncertainty. Show all your working. If we start by working out the percentage uncertainty of the mass of Na2O, we work out percentage uncertainty by taking the uncertainty of each reading, 0.005 grams in this case, and then we multiply by the amount of times we've used a mass reading, in this case twice. Now I've rewritten what we worked out as our mass of Na2O, which was 1.24. So we divide it by 1.24. Then we multiply by 100 to get a percentage. In this case, our percentage is 0.81% for mass. Then for temperature, we use a similar approach. 0.1, this time, is our uncertainty for each reading. We then multiply by 2 because we've used two temperature readings to work out temperature change. I've rewritten temperature change as 35 degrees Celsius. We then multiply by 100. That gives us a percentage uncertainty of 0.57%. So mass has a greater percentage uncertainty. Percentage uncertainty is something that comes up in most PAGs. And so it's a really good idea that you know this equation, practice using it because it's a very common two marker for PAG questions. And in these two markers, you get a mark for the percentage uncertainty of mass and the percentage uncertainty of temperature. You don't get a mark for linking to the question, but it's always a good idea to, because in a level response question, that would get you a mark. Level response questions are longer answer questions, which this is not, but it is good practice. C. Suggest a modification to this experiment using the same apparatus which would reduce the percentage errors in the measurements. Explain your reasoning. Again, this is a very common two-mark question to do with mass PAGs. The set answer that you should learn is a greater mass. You could also use a greater temperature change. Both would reduce percentage uncertainty. And the reason for this is because if you have a larger denominator, that will reduce the number that you end up with. And a greater mass and a greater uh, temperature change will be the denominators when working out percentage uncertainty. And so they will reduce the percentage errors if you have a greater mass or temperature change. In this question, you get a mark for saying greater mass and a mark for saying greater temperature change. D. 
Sodium oxide Na2O can be prepared by the redox reaction of Na, NO2 and sodium metal. Nitrogen gas is also formed. Part 1. What is a systematic name of Na, NO2? So Na, that's sodium. So the first part of our name would be sodium. And NO2 is a nitrate ion. So sodium nitrate is the answer for part one. You get a mark for getting this whole name correct. Then, using oxidation numbers with signs, show the element that's oxidized and the element that's reduced in this reaction for part two. If we start by writing an equation, we would get that Na, NO2 and sodium form Na2 and nitrogen gas. We don't need to balance it for oxidation numbers because the stoichiometry does not impact oxidation numbers. But if we add oxidation numbers to each of these compounds, so if we start by looking at the individual elements, if it's on its own, it's going to equal zero. So the sodium metal and nitrogen gas would have oxidation numbers of zero. Then Oxygen, that's always minus 2. And sodium, when it's in a compound, is always plus 1 because it's group 1 metal. Now, oxidation numbers will always need to add up to 0. We can see in Na2O, that's the case because it's plus 1 times 2, that's plus 2, minus 2, that equals 0. In NaNO2, we've got plus 1, minus 2 times 2, which, well, that will be minus 3. So, to make it 0, nitrogen has to be plus 3. Then, if we work out our element that's oxidised, oxidised means that the oxidation number is going to increase. So, the only element here that's oxidation number is increasing is sodium, and it's going from 0 to plus 1. Then for reduction, or element that's being reduced, we're looking for an oxidation number that's decreasing, and the only element here is nitrogen, and its oxidation number goes from plus 3 to 0. For part three, we need to construct an equation for this reaction. Well, we've already got part of an equation. We've got NaNO2 plus Na going to Na2O and nitrogen gas. But we need to balance this equation. If we balance this equation, we need two because we need two nitrogens for nitrogen gas. Then six and 4 because we need to balance the oxygens and balance the sodiums. For parts 2 and 3 as they're combined you get in part 2 you get a mark for the correct element oxidized and the correct element reduced and their and the second mark for their oxidation numbers being correct. Part 3 the mark is for the whole complete equation being correct.